The last small fruit we will cover is grapes. Grapes are a good crop for Kansas. In 1901, Kansas grew more than 5,000 acres of grapes. Acreage decreased until 1985 when Kansas passed the Farm Winery Act, establishing guidelines for wineries. By 2005, there were 170 total acres of grapes. As with most small fruit, grapes are self-fruitful and only one variety is needed. Grapes are also very productive and can produce 10 to 20 pounds of fruit per vine. The secret for this much production is good care and pruning. Grapes require good drainage and a pH no higher than 7.3, but a pH of 5.5 to 6.5 is preferred. We can grow American and French American hybrids in Kansas, but cannot grow European types as they are severely injured when temperatures drop below 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Grapes must have a trellis for highest yields. Now grapes can grow on about anything, such as an arbor or a fence, but need to be grown on a trellis to reach their yield potential. There are also a number of different ways to prune grapes, but I teach single curtain cordon because it is easy to understand and is productive. The major parts of the grapevine are the trunk and the two cordons. Cordon is a word that originated in France and is used as another name for the arms. What you see here is a pruned grape trained to a single curtain cordon system. Notice on each cordon or arm there are three fruiting spurs and three renewal spurs. Choose the three largest, healthiest shoots coming off each cordon to be your fruiting spurs. These are cut back to three to five butts. Then choose the next three largest, healthiest shoots on each cordon to be your renewal spurs. These are cut back to one bud. The renewal spurs will be the fruiting spurs the following year. The first bud on each of the fruiting spur or renewal spur usually produces leaves but no fruit. Buds two through five produce both leaves and fruit. Grape pruning may seem severe as you remove more growth than you leave, but is necessary to produce high yields. These are older vines after pruning. You can see the fruiting spurs and the renewal spurs. This is a photo of a young grape before pruning. This may look like a tangled mess, but isn't as tangled or as messy as an older vine would be. So how do you decide what to cut and what to keep? There is a method you can use that can help. Take 12 clothespins and paint half of them a bright color. I chose orange. Now choose the three nicest side shoots on each arm for fruiting spurs and put an orange clothespin on them. Then choose the next nicest three on each arm and put an uncolored clothespin on them. Then walk up to the vine and cut off all shoots without a clothespin. Cut back those with an uncolored clothespin to one bud and those with an orange clothespin to three to five buds. You remove more of the grapevine than you leave. This is a close-up of that process after marking but before pruning. This is after pruning. Your next step will be get rid of all the prunings that you have left on the ground. Grapes are extremely sensitive to 2,4-D. Damage can weaken and even kill grapevines. 2,4-D is found in lawn herbicides that are used to kill dandelions and other broadleaf weeds. Damage can be avoided by using these herbicides at the recommended time in late October to early November. This is when broadleaf weeds are most vulnerable and grapes are dormant and are therefore not damaged. The major disease on grapes is black rot. It causes individual grapes within a cluster to shrivel and blacken. By the time you see these symptoms, it's much too late for control. Start spraying when new growth reaches two inches and then spray every 10 days until you reach five weeks after bloom. Products with mycobutanil are the best materials for this purpose.